All right, in this particular example, we're looking at a triangle with three given points on it, and we're looking at figuring out what the angles are. So I'm going to look here and say that our vector OP should be fairly easy to see. We're going from the origin to the point P, so we'll have to go negative 1 in the x direction and 4 in the y direction. Then OQ, we would have to go 6 in the x direction and 3 in the y direction. So in finding the angle between OP and OQ, I'm going to refer to that as cosine of theta because writing cosine of O looks weird. I will take the dot product of those two things on top, and then I'll divide by the magnitude of those two things on the bottom. So doing that dot product here, we'll be able to see what lines up, and so we will have negative 6 plus 12 on the top. On the bottom we will have a square root of, let's see, if I have 1 squared and 4 squared, that'll be 17. And if I have 6 squared and 3 squared, then I'm going to end up with a 45. So if I use the calculator to approximate that, I get about 0 0.217. And then I'll use the inverse cosine of the value I just got so that I don't lose any more digits of accuracy than I have to. And that turns out to be 77.5 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and call it 77 degrees. It's like 77.47, okay? Then similarly here, we're going to uh, try to figure out what the angle Q is. And so in doing that, we're going to have to think about the vector QP and also the vector QO. Now QO is going to be easy because we just got through doing OQ. It's just going to be the negative of it. So for QP, that's a little harder to think through here. We've got to go from Q to P. So that means that our x is going to change by reducing by 7, whereas our y is going to go up by 1. All right. So now when we do the cosine of the angle q, we do our dot product on top, and we'll have 42 minus 3. And on the bottom, we have our square roots. And the square root of right here, we have 7 squared and 1 squared. So 49 and 1 is 50. And then here we'll do, oh, we have the one we had just a minute ago, the square root of 45. And so my calculator approximates that as about 0.822. So to get my Q, I'll do the inverse cosine of whatever that was there. And when I do that, I end up with about 34.69 something degrees. But I, as always, we're going to round that to the nearest degree and just go ahead and call it 35 degrees. Finally, figuring out that what that angle P is, we're just going to do 180 minus 35 and minus 77, which will turn out to be 68 degrees.